Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Get Fit With Me Expanding Your Physical and Mental Fitness Group. This group is for individuals who are ready to expand both their physical and mental fitness while helping and supporting others with similar goals all along the way. So before we get into introductions and what today is about, I want to let you know that I love workshops like this because you guys are going to be up and moving. So I know the camera angle may be funky at times, but the point of these workshops are for me to teach you something, you to practice it, and your form to be perfect when you leave here, that you feel confident doing these on your own. I am a huge advocate for form and the importance of it and the transfer of it in your everyday life. So there may be times where it will seem boring because I'm going to stress certain uh, movements, but it's because I've seen injuries with these in the past. So if there gets to be a time, I promise there is a reason between there is a reason behind it because form is so important to me. So let's get started. I have some questions today. For those of you who are live on Facebook, hashtag live. If you are watching the replay, hashtag replay. So I know you're there and answer these questions along with us. Um, so Tanya, you are here. So I want to know who you are, where you're from, and do you do any strength training? or resistance training? You are muted. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can. Mm -hmm. Well, I was having issues the whole long because I pressed the wrong button, had to go out and come back in, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tanya Wemhoff. I'm from Clarks, Nebraska in the middle of nowhere. And I am old and I should be doing strength and resistance, but I'm not. When was the last time you think you did some strength and resistance training kind of consistently, if ever? Uh, 2008. And do you remember that feeling that you had when you did it consistently? Yeah, it felt pretty good. But now that I'm in the middle of nowhere, I can't get to the gym very easily. Well, perfect, because I think you have a set of dusty dumbbells that you've told me about. <laughs> yeah, they're getting dustier. Do you have those with you today? No, I can get them. You are going to need to get them. We are going to be interacting and moving through these movements together for a few reasons. One, because we all learn by doing in some sort of way. And it is good for ourselves to practice muscle memory. So you can sit there and watch me do a bicep curl all the time, but until you actually move through it and let me know where some pain points may be, maybe it hurts to be at a certain angle. Until we practice them, I won't know if it feels right for you. And I want you to leave here feeling comfortable. Well, I Lana, oh, yes, Tanya? Well, I was gonna tell you, just so you know, um, I've been driving a lot for the last 10 days and I don't know it's from sitting in the car, but I do have like a catch in the right side of my back. So, okay, perfect. If there's anything we do today that seems to bother it a little bit, don't do it and let me know. And I will give you a modification for it so that okay. you, um, can still move through the same muscle groups. Got it. Mary Lynn, if you are able to jump on and speak, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and do you do strength or resistance training? Hi, Morgan. I am from uh, Michigan. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so I actually went to a physical therapist today because I've been having some problems with my right arm, and he gave me some uh, different exercises to do with like the resistance bands and stuff because apparently it's something, I can't remember exactly what he called it and I have to read through my paperwork, but I supposedly it's gonna be cured in like five or six weeks and I have appointments two times a week for the next few weeks and, you know, so I'm just like trying to, so I'm gonna do this minimally today as best able, but yeah. Perfect. 
And I know that you've come to my classes, so I know your form is great. So if there's a move that I show today that you know you can't do with that right side because it irritates it, do it on just the left or just do it with no weight, whatever is more comfortable for you. You know your okay. boundaries and I want you to listen to your body, especially because we have a regimen in place to help get you stronger. I want you to stick on that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I am excited. So we have five moves today that we're going to be going over. Um, I'm going to tell you the importance of all of them in one easy sentence. Functionality in your everyday life. So the movements we are going to go over today are going to transfer into your life for functional movements such as getting up and down off the chair while hanging onto your laptop. It's going to be bending down to grab your pizza out of the oven. It's going to be picking up something and putting it in the car. All these movements in our normal everyday life that we don't realize we're using our certain muscles for, until we have that injury of, oh, my back, I didn't use the right glute muscle. I'm going to teach you how to engage all of those muscles today while also using your dumbbells. I will start you guys all out with body weight only. And if you feel confident enough to add the dumbbells as we move through the modifications, I absolutely want you to do so. So that is the reason we are doing this. That is the why behind these movements. First movement we're going to start with is going to be a single arm row. So the single arm row, we are going to need some sort of support, whether it's your chair, your table. We're going to grab our dumbbell. Before, I'm going to grab my dumbbell and put it up there. I'm going to set myself up, right hand on my chair, left foot stepped back, left arm hanging down. Shoulder back and down. As you can see, I have a nice straight line from my head to my tailbone. I'm then going to pull my elbow back and then slowly release so I have a slight bend. This is the motion that we want to practice. This is working those back muscles, especially as we sit in front of a computer often. These are the muscles that help keep us from letting our shoulders round forward. Perfect, Tanya. <laughs> awesome. So, when we feel comfortable, we then grab that weight from the same position. Sometimes I see this with this big camel back, and sometimes I see the arch. We want that nice flat back. Okay, which foot did you say is back and front? So the way I remember is whatever side you have the dumbbell in goes yeah. backwards to make room. Oh, duh. Perfect. And keeping that elbow nice and close. So if I were to be in front here, okay. I want that elbow to track right and nice close to our body. A lot of times I see people that will get it out wide. That is a different movement that we are not learning today. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And the last little cue I like to tell people is engage your core like you're doing a sit up. You want your core to be nice and tight because it's going to help stabilize that body. Good. Let's flip on over and do the other side. Make sure everything's feeling good. Everything feeling, if anything does not feel good for you guys, I want you to either raise your hand, shout out, say something to me. Um, I will be asking, but I may miss. So shoulder back and down, hand is placed. Whatever side you have the dumbbell in, that foot is back. And we're rowing up and down. Good. A lot of times I see people kind of move the dumbbell this way. Really try to keep that nice 90 degree bend in that elbow as we move upward. Perfect. How's everything feeling? All that feel good? So far. So far, perfect. So that is going to be our single arm row movement. That is movement one of five. Movement number two, we are going to do a deadlift. So this is going to be for our back of our legs and our glutes. So that little problem spot in your back right now, Tanya, is probably yeah. stemmed from something in this area. So yeah. if we do this and it bugs you, let me know and I have a different option for you. We're going to start by placing our feet nice hip width apart. I'm going to turn so you guys can see me from the side. 
Take your hands and place them behind your lower back so your chest is nice and open. Now unlock your knees because I know we're all doing it. Have a nice <laughs> little bounce in them. <laughs> With a nice deep breath, push your hips back like you have a wall behind you until you start to feel a little stretch in the back of your legs. Once you hit that spot, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna squeeze your butt as you stand. Nice strong clench. Ah. So this right here, and you can play around with your foot placement. Maybe a little wider is better for you. Maybe a little narrower. The biggest thing is I see, if you were to watch my neck right now, I see people want to keep their neck up or drop their chin down. I want a nice straight line. So these are good ones to practice when you are in front of it, when you can kind of look out the side of your eye at a mirror. Remembering to squeeze through our glutes. Tanya, do you mind turning to the side for me so I can check your form? Perfect. Good. And stand and squeeze. Perfect. How's that feel? Pretty good. Pretty good? Awesome. Yeah. And Mary Lynn, all these feeling good for you? Yes. Yes. I keep putting it on mute. I can leave it on. I just didn't want to. It, no, it's up to you. And okay. if I don't hear anything from you, I can assume it's feeling good too. Okay. So. No, it's good. <laughs> good. So once we have mastered this movement right here, which from the looks at it, we have, you have two options. You can either take your dumbbell and place it behind your back so it kind of hangs below your butt, which is still going to open that chest up. And then you're going to push those hips back. And then you're going to stand. So we're waiting this deadlift now. So this is option one. Option two is a little bit trickier because we're going to take both your dumbbells and you're going to place them right on your thighs. And we're going to take our shoulders that look like this and we're going to pull them back and down. And now I'm going to push my hips back and keep my weights connected to my legs the entire way down. Good, Tanya, yep, perfect. Now do I keep my weights this way? I don't wanna turn them the other way, right? Sorry. I like to turn them so my palms face my body. You can keep them on the sides if it's more comfortable or you can bring them right up in front so that you're showing me, so you're showing the world your knuckles. I show the world my what? Your knuckles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. Feet shoulder width apart, push those hips back. It really, and we have got to keep our shoulders back and down the entire time through this motion. Usually when people wait this in the front, this is what happens is we get here, and we yep. stop pushing our hips back and we start to round. So we want to pull our shoulders back and down and then stand. Good. So Tanya, take both those weights and place them behind your back how you were before. Yep, place them both back there. And now move through that hinge motion one more time. Let me see how that looks. Perfect. So I'm going to suggest to you that you stay with this motion for the next couple weeks as you practice it. And eventually your body will train to keep those shoulders back and down for when you move those weights forward. How does that sound? That sounds good because I roll my shoulders down every single time without it. Yep. And that's a good way to see is, yeah, your form is perfect here because it the little bit away behind your back in your hands help open that chest up. Good. These are also huge muscles for walking, 
We do a lot of quad stuff, but we also got to work the backside a lot. So we need to work, make sure we're working the backside. So this is perfect. Next one we're going to do is bicep curls. So keep those weights in your hands. Palms are going to go out. Elbows are going to be flush with your body. Do not lock them in your hips. Just let them sit on the side of your body. Feet shoulder width apart. Hips are tucked. We're standing up nice and straight. We're going to curl our weights up to our shoulders while keeping our elbows in the same position. And then slowly come on down. Good. Imagine you're picking something up off the table, such as your fork, and you're bringing it to your mouth. These are the muscles that are used when we do that. Perfect. How are these feeling? Sore. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get it easy. I mean, it's easy, but it's, I feel the pull. So I'm going to challenge you to shake your arms out for a sec and turn your palms. So without the weight, turn your palms towards you. So now you're going to do the same motion, but your palms are going to be towards you. This is going to be a nice little hammer curl. Good. Yep. Even just doing this without your weights is still going to, is still technically strength training. Because you are putting impact on the joints, which is making the muscles stronger, which is going to make the joints stronger. Hmm. All this feeling okay, Mary Lynn? How's that arm feeling? It's fine. It's good. Okay. Perfect. So we have, we've done our bent over row. We've done our deadlift. We've done our bicep curls. We are now going to do our weighted squats. So before we add weight though, I am gonna make sure you guys have a chair. If you are not used to doing squats, if you are used to doing squats, I'm gonna have you stick with the squats. Knees and toes always point the same direction. So a lot of times your knees wanna fall in, so we wanna make sure we press out with them. I'm going to set myself on down and then bring myself on up. Ooh. And if this is an emotion we don't do often, we can bring ourselves to our chair, get ourselves set up, and we can do a sit to stand. So that right there allows for us to lower all the way down. Good. Squeeze in our glutes as we push through your heel, push through your big toe. Perfect. Awesome. So if you are going with a squat, I want you to make sure that your teeth, but that your knees and your toes are pointing the same direction. And I want you to focus on keeping that weight nice and close with that chest upright. So weight is going to go on your chest. If you're doing the squat, you're going to sit on right here, down and back up. Seeing as I'm not falling forward, Oh. I'm keeping my chest up. If you sense you are falling forward, take that weight or weights, keep, make yourself to your chair, keep it right on there, and that will help you stay upright. Your chair will force you to not fall forward. Good. Tanya, how are you guys feeling? Okay, but it does put a stress on my knees. Okay, does it put on a, does it put a stress on your knees when you do a sit to stand or only when you do the air squats? Only when I do the air squats. Move okay. into the sit to stand and you can wait that sit to stand if you would like. Same position you had them, nice and close to the body. The, clo the better you can make it with one, the easier it will be to move the weight. Good. Push through those heels, push that big toe and stand up and then slowly back down. That's, that's easier. So I mean, it's still on my knee, but not as bad. Take your feet out about two more inches for me and see how that feels. Yep. Wow, that's a little better. Boy, it's pulling on that piece that's, um, 
a little bit sore on my back. Not a bad way, but I feel it. And that's the that's the cool part is when you're doing things, if there's something that's bugging you one day, you can play with that foot placement as long as your knees and toes face the same direction. I'm going to suggest you start with the sit to stand and we can build up to the air squats. Yes, okay. the air squats are, they're all working the same muscles. The nice part about the chair is you also internally have more confidence because you know there's something behind you and you will allow yourself to trust yourself a little bit more and lower. I also feel like I'm keeping my back straighter, you know? You I'm have better that. control as well. Okay. Those look great. Your knees are not doing anything funky. It looks perfect. The last movement here is going to be through our back of our arms, which I just find it hilarious that I, I don't know at what age, but apparently at one, at some point, we get to the point where we call it the bingo arm or the bat wing or some other funky name that people come up with. And it just makes me laugh. So yeah. you're gonna do a movement to help tone and strengthen that so that your guys' bingo arms and bat, arm, and bat, bat wings don't get so large. <laughs> It gets uh, oh. hopeless. What'd you say, Tanya? I think it's hopeless. It's already there. <laughs> it is not. Yes, the skin is already there, but you can always tighten muscles. So we are going to practice those. You can do these standing. You can also do these sitting. Um, they're a little more awkward when you do them sitting, but I like to do them standing. I'll show you both. So let me switch my weights out. We are going to stand on up and lock our elbows into our side with our weights up forward, just like they are full of glasses of water. Slight bend in our knees, like we're gonna do that deadlift. And now just bend back a little bit. So not, not much, just a little bit here. Perfect. Now take those hands and press those fists back behind you. Good, and then slowly come back to 90 in those elbows. Perfect. When our arms are straight behind us, we should be feeling those, that muscle on the back of our arm kind of squeeze and tense up. And then when we come back to starting, it should relax. Does that seem about right? Yep. Yes. Perfect. These are an awesome one that, so if you are sitting, let me scooch this. All you would do is lean forward in your chair and do the same thing. Pushing those weights behind. God, remembering we don't want to drop that chin. And we don't want to look up at the sky. We want to keep a nice neutral spine. Do you like these better standing or sitting? Good question. I think I like standing because I'm more conscious about keeping um, my back straight. I mean, I'm keeping it straight when I'm sitting, but when I'm sitting, I feel like I, in order to get out of the way of the chair, I go out more. So I feel like my form's better if I do it this way, you know? Yep, and I would agree. And this is also another time when you want to think about pulling your belly button to the spine, getting it nice and tight, because that will help if you start to feel yourself kind of rock from your toes to your heels. Because it does happen sometimes. We kind of do a little sway. Engaging that core will keep that sway from happening. So if you ever start to feel yourself doing the, I'm on a little boat, lock that core in and it will help with that. <laughs> so we'll set those weights down. We're gonna shake out our arms, we're gonna shake out our legs, we're gonna do two stretches, and then we're actually gonna do a little workout. So the workout is going to be three times through those five exercises, six reps on each side. So some of you guys may have heavier weights and think, oh, six reps isn't bad, I do this often. If that is the case, do as many reps as you are comfortable with. If you are starting out and you're thinking, 
Holy moly, six reps is a lot. Take it down to however many you are comfortable with. I like to always do at least three rounds of something. One, because round one, your body is still relearning the exercise. Your muscle memory is kicking in. Two, you've gotten better. And by that three round, third round, you are perfect. So think of it when you do anything. You're never perfect at the first time. It takes a little bit. Same with our muscles and our movements. So let's take that right arm across, give a nice little stretch here. And then we'll take it over to the other side. And then we'll reach up to the sky, trying to touch. I can actually touch my ceiling in this part of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, it's two stories. I was gonna say, you look like you have some vaulted ceilings in there. Well, I got two story windows here. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And now let's take our feet out. Like you're to do a squat, but let's push our hips back and just kind of slowly bend on over. This is one of those times where it's, I allow it to be okay to have a little bend in your spine. Just because we're getting a nice little stretch to that area. But I do want to let you know that when you stand up, I want you to squeeze your butt as you are standing and slowly bring yourself back up. Perfect. So we are going to do three times through. We're going to do six single arm rows. So we're going to start with that dumbbell over here. Let me get this mat. We're going to start. You either start with your right or your left arm, up to you. I am gonna count. I'm gonna go nice and slow, just like when we practiced. If I end up going too fast, you go until you're ready. If I'm going too slow and you're flying through, I encourage you to slow down just a little bit then. <laughs> so I'm placing my left hand on my bench, right foot is back, right, right hand has the dumbbell in it, shoulder back and down, core nice and tight. We're rowing up. And down, one, two, three, four, five, good, six, good, let's switch sides. Right hand is going on my bench, left hand is back, left hand has my dumbbell in it, Core nice and tight, shoulder back and down, and we're up and down. One, two, three, four, five, last one, six. Good. We're going to move right into those deadlifts. So, Tanya, you're putting that weight behind. Mary Lynn, you're choosing whichever motion was best for you. I know you have proper form in those deadlifts. I'm grabbing my other weight. Shoulders back and down. Let's push those hips back like we're touching our butt to a wall. Nice little stretch. Stand and squeeze. One. Two. Three, good. Keep it that nice straight line from your head to your tailbone. Four. Five, and last one here. Six, perfect. Set those down, shake out those arms if we need to. We have our bicep curls next. Remember you can either go no weight hammer curls or weights with your bicep curls. Your choice. Ready? Hips tucked, core tight, nice strong base, and we're up and down. Good. One, two, three, four. Five, last one. Six, good. We have our squat or our sit to stands. So I'm gonna do sit to stand this round. 
Weight is going to go right nice and close to our body if we choose to have it. Knees and toes are structured in the right direction and we're standing and squeezing. Nice and slow on the way down. One. Power on the way up. Control on the way down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Awesome. Tricep kickback. Switching on over, I promise we'll take a break and then we'll go into round two and then round three. So take out those arms, bring them up to 90 like we're holding nice strong glasses of water. Push your hips back, a little bit of bend in our knees and let's press those arms to a nice straight line and coming on back, one. Two. Three. Four, good. Five, one more. Six, good. Set those weights down, shake those arms out. While we are resting here, I'm gonna kind of give information so we, our arms and our legs have a little break. So how many times is a question I get? How many times should I be doing this a day? Starting off, just do it one time a day. And really, even when you're not starting off, one time a day is plenty. The consistency part is doing it at least two to three times and to make sure that you are never at a level 10 of, I cannot do this, this hurts. You should always, by the time you end your round three, on that sixth rep, you should feel challenged, but it should not feel impossible. So that's a good thing to kind of keep about. Oh, I feel some challenge in there. Nothing hurts, but I'm challenging myself. That's the mentality I want you to try to think about. I, I can do this easily, but slowing it down and adding some weight to it is going to make it more challenging. You want that challenging factor, not the I'm going to go till it hurts factor. <laughs> Let's go back, grab that weight. We're going back into that bent over row. We are starting round two. So left hand is on your bench, right foot back, shoulder back and down. We're rowing up. And down, one, two, belly button pull to the spine, three, nice straight line from your head to your tailbone, four, five, six, good. Let's transition over to that other side. Hand is placed, shoulder back and down, slight bend in our arm, and we're up. And down, one, two, three, four, five, last one, six, good, into our deadlifts, so maybe we're going hands behind, remember nice light bend, I'm going hands behind this time, wait it if you'd like. Let's push those hips back, nice stretch. Stand and squeeze, one. On these deadlifts, just like a squat, your way down should be slower and your way up can be a little bit faster. That is the power coming from your legs and your glutes. That's three, four, Five, last one here, six, good. Let's go into those bicep curls. Shoulders back and down. I'm gonna show you from the side this time so you can guys watch how stable I am. Hips tucked, core tight, we're curling up and slowly back down. Good, one, a lot of times, as we get tired, we want to kind of throw those weights and rock it with our hips. We don't want that. That's three. We want our biceps doing the work. And we want that control of the weight. That's four. 
I like to say, we want to control the weight. We don't want the weight to control us. Good, that's six. Perfect. We're going into our squats next. I'm going to do normal squats this time because I did those sit to stands last. Knees and toes point the same direction. If you're doing those sit to stands, you can start seated to make sure the chair is there if you'd like. And we are going to lower and come on up. Squeeze one. Good. Think about pushing your hips back. Good. Two. Three. Four. Five. And last one. Six. Good. Grabbing onto those weights, we're going to go into our tricep kickback. I promise we have one more break and just one more round if you guys are up for it. Stand it up straight, arms at 90, push our hips back, lock those elbows in, let's press those arms back and coming back in. One, two, three, four, five, Good. Grab a drink of water if you need to. We have one more round. Um, so like I kind of said, importance of strength training. It is going to increase your quality of life and improve your ability to be an everyday person. So if you're struggling to do exercises such as, I'm going to say exercises, such as switching the laundry, grabbing those heavy wet towels and putting them in the dryer, Strength training will help make that easier. Maybe you're struggling to get something off the top shelf and bring it down. Strength training will make that easier. Maybe it's the stairs. Strength training will help with that if done correctly. And I'm here to help you with that. Let's set up. We have our rows as our last time through. We are only going to do four each side this time. So let's get ourselves set up. Left hand on the bench. Right hand is behind. Shoulder back and down, nice straight line from your head to your tailbone. We're rowing up and down. One, two, three, four. Good. Let's switch on over. Right hand on the bench. Left hand has my dumbbell in it. Left leg back. Belly button pulls the spine, and we're rowing that weight up and down. One, two, three, four, good. We're going into those deadlifts. Put those weights either behind your back or on your front, whichever modification. And let's push our hips back. Nice little stretch. Stand and squeeze our butt. One, two, three, four. Good. Straight into our bicep curls. So shake out those arms if we need to. Lock those elbows in, slight bend in our knees. Let's curl our weights up and back down. One. Good. Looking good, you guys. Three. One more. Four. Perfect. Back into our sit to stand or our squats. I'm going to go sit to stand this round just to really focus on. So if you feel like by that third round, your squats are starting to feel like you're falling forward, go back to that sit to stand. You can never forget the basics. Always good to go back. And let's push through, squeeze and stand. Good. One. Two. Three, last one. 
four. Good. Last time with our tricep kickbacks, then we will wrap it up. Um, well, I'll see if you guys have any questions, and then we will move into your guys' biggest insights. So let's grab those weights standing on up or sitting down, just leaning forward, up to you. Lock your elbows in, push those hips back. Let's press those arms back behind. One. Two. Three. Four. Good. Set those weights down. Shake that body out. Awesome job today, you guys. So there is so much to do with strength training and the functionality and how it moves into your life. Um, Mary Lynn has been to class, so she knows there's some ground and core work that we do that will eventually in our lives come into play. We do a move where you get it just up and down off the ground, ideally in, without your hands. Imagine starting to learn how to do that for when the time comes when we fall and we need to be able to pull ourselves back up. We do all types of functional movements, either in class or one-on-one -on -one if you choose to work one-on-one -on -one with me. I make sure that what we do is functional for you and your lifestyle. It's not a cookie cutter program that everybody does. It is specific to you. So if you have any interest in this at all, drop a me in the comments and I'll reach out to you and we'll jump on a little call and have a little chat about it. Um, but I'm always encouraging you guys to come to class or to, if you just want to learn more, we can definitely do a little consultation as well. So with that being said, I want to know from you guys here on the screen and for you guys on Facebook watching the replay, what is your biggest takeaway from today? What did you learn today that you're going to implement and practice? or was just a good reminder for something that you've been doing? And what is your win for the week? What is the, what is the big win for you this week? So it's really two things. You want me to start? Yes, go for it, okay. Tanya. Well, I was worried that two pounds wasn't enough, but if I want to do the repetition, it's perfect. You know, and I can always work my way up to more, so that's no big deal. And probably the win was uh, I haven't done my treadmill for the last 10 days because I was traveling. So trying to get back into that was hard, but at least I have twice done this week. I'm going to do tomorrow and then I can add this. That is awesome. Congrats on getting back into routine after being off for that long. It's hard to kind That's of get our hard. mindset back in. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> And I love that you said that you thought the two pound weights were going to be, were not going to be enough. And that is a great reminder that you can always do more reps. And another way to make things more challenging is the pace that you move. This is going to be a lot harder to hold because it's a longer time that your muscles are going, are undergoing uh, pressure or they're having to work. So if you feel like before you move up in weights, Try how long you're going through the movement, slow down and go anywhere up to 15 reps. Anything more than 15 reps, let's get you some heavier weights. And when that happens, let me know and I'll help you kind of figure out what types of weights would be the next step to go up. Okay. Do you have any questions based on today? No. Perfect. Okay. Mary Lynn, what is your win and what did you take away from today's call? So my win is the reminders about the proper form and slow down is the big is the big reminder. And that's the big win because it's not about how many you do, how quickly you do. It's really, you know, to slow down and make sure that you're really feeling it as you're doing it. So, yeah, that was it. So. And I get my stitches out on Monday, so I'll be able to do more of my leg stuff on Monday. So, yeah. Good job. Awesome. Yeah. On that, I do have, a, I have two side questions for you, Mary Lynn. One being, because of your arm, do you want a more upper body or lower body video on Monday? Well, um. Or a core video. You want a core video? Yeah, how about a core video? That'd be good. Perfect. And then second question for you is, 
you attended the caffeine talk and you had mentioned that you were going to try to use the rower in the morning when you got up. Have you, have you tried that at all? And if you have, how has that gone? So I have to start back over because after I was on vacation and then I had the visit where, you know, I got my little stitches. So I couldn't do anything. I mean, it's nothing huge. It's just, there's five stitches and they tell you don't do anything for two weeks. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was gone on vacation for 10 days, although I did walk 462 steps up three days on my nice. vacation. So yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And my heart rate got up to, you know, within the first two sections, my heart rate was up to like 150, I swear. I'm like, oh my God. And my little granddaughter who's seven, she's flying off them. And I'm like, seriously, <laughs> this, that's just the difference between when you, you know, are older. And yeah, my daughter had no problem. You know, she just turned 30, but I'm like, this is just, you know, and I'm like, I said, you guys just go, I'll get there, you know, and, and they do have benches along the way. So if you want to take a half of a break or something, but I'm telling you, I know that, like, in the first two, because they're steep, you know, and it was like, geez, oh, Pete's. I mean, and there was a fellow there I met. He does it. He lives up there and he does it every single day, summer, winter, fall. He puts on like cleats on his shoes for the winter and he's fallen a few times. I said, well, what do you do? He said, well, I always have my cell phone with me. And I call like the emergency people. I'm like, okay. But he said, I mean, he, he is in great shape. He was like 90, I think, you know, but yeah. That is important. Just goes to show you, you always got to take care of yourself because yeah. once you stop. Exactly. It's, and it's the earlier we realize this. So let's say this is the first time you guys have both realized this. That's awesome. Imagine realizing this 10 years from now. Although sometimes we feel like we're late to the game for things because others around us have started sooner, you are not late to the game because you are starting when you are ready or maybe when you're not even ready to do it. You just know you have to, but you are still more ahead than you would be if you would have waited. So that's a good reminder for, yes, we had a few setbacks, but we are getting back on track. And I could wait three more months and just start when the weather goes bad, but no, I'm going to start now because it's going to help me long-term. Yes. And you are awesome, Morgan. Thank yes. You. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. I love doing, I love just coming on here on Thursdays and I love speaking to you guys about all the topics I've talked about, but my favorites are the ones where we actually get up and get to move throughout our day because we are so stationary for such long periods that this little break up in the afternoon and we are over. I am going to try to keep these to about 40, 45 minutes because your guys' time is super valuable to, to you guys and it's valuable to me that you guys show up. Um, so we did go over today and I apologize for that, but I am going to try to keep them nice and short, less than an hour so you guys aren't feeling like you're carving out too much time for this. Um, next week, we are talking about motivation and how to stay motivated and to get motivated. So if you are struggling or you have struggled with that in the past, make sure to tune in. Um, I will, I'm going to start doing some stretching in the beginning. So we will move some, some a little bit, but it will be a more kind of conversation topic instead of this movement that happens. So enjoy your Thursday, you guys. I will see you guys next week. Enjoy your weekend, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Great. Thank you, Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. You're nice welcome. Bye, you. guys. Bye-bye.